Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In today's lecture we'll talk about the respiratory system part 2 that means a respiratory system part 2 in this we'll deal only about the normal defense mechanisms a respiratory defense mechanism what exactly the respiratory defense mechanism is when you inhale lot of dust particle or microorganisms most of the particles will be entered into the respiratory tract and at the same time they will have multiple filters so all those filters which prevents the infection we call it as defense mechanisms one we have cough reflex cough reflex will be i will be talking about in detail regarding this second system cough reflex is mainly upper respiratory tract it in it may be present in lower respiratory tract also second muco ciliary clearance this is the second defense mechanism and the third and the last defense mechanism is function or function or mechanism of alveolar macrophages large particles medium sized particles predominantly they'll get trapped in the nose by nasal hair structures and also tracheobronchial tree with mucus they will be trapped in mucus once these particles they get trapped then what next it has to be thrown out of the body so you will have one cough reflex cough and you will have sneeze so when you develop cough so these particles will be thrown out and even if sneezing these particles will be thrown out so this is we talked about the nose when majority of the particles are cleared the next medium sized particles enters the tracheobronchial tree this is the tracheobronchial tree all of you know that the tracheobronchial tree is lined by respiratory epithelium nothing but it is pseudo stratified pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium this you can see in that picture so it is ciliated interspersed amongst this you have goblet cells mucus secreting cells or goblet cells when you can see in this picture you have a respiratory epithelial cells and you have goblet cells respiratory epithelial cells we have small hair like projections called villi and these goblet cells they produce mucus which forms a thin layer on the surface the majority of medium sized particles and even a small part of uh, tiny particles when they are air is entering in the tracheobronchial tree they will get trapped in the mucus so this mucus when the respiratory epithelium the cilia is functioning normally the main function is it has to move the dust particles or the mucus secretion towards the upper side that means towards the nasopharynx nasopharynx this ciliary motility is almost always uniform and they are regular beating pattern so they will push these particles towards the nose so this mucus along with the entrapped dust or organisms will be pushed upwards finally you will spit those mucus outside or you will engulf this mucus along with the particles inside the stomach ultimately 
when it enters the stomach we all know that stomach has got strong acid secretions it will be destroyed by acid so this is the second mucociliary escalation or escalator is the second defense mechanisms when majority of the large particles and majority of the medium particles and almost all fine particles when they get entrapped in the upper respiratory tract and also lower respiratory tract even you have a fine minute particles like 1 microns 2 microns 2.5 uh, microns particles they enter directly into the alveolar sac here i am showing the picture of alveolar sac so if you recollect my previous class 1 normally when you see the normal lung you will have a clear space in the lumen or you may have few cells called as alveolar macrophages alveolar macrophages which are a resident and they are present in the alveolar lumen so when dust particles the minute dust particle enters the alveoli finally it will be engulfed by these macrophages this is the third line of defense so in normal individual all of us we live in smog leading cities we inhale lot of dust particles but if our defense mechanism is good that means the cough reflex sneezing reflex mucociliary escalator and the normal function of the alveoli majority of the particles will be cleared off you will not get any kind of a infection when you get an infection why how you will get an infection when you have an impairment of these mechanisms either you have impairment of cough reflex that means usually seen in case of chronic debilitating individuals and any patient who has got loss of cough reflex loss of cough reflex number 3 patients who are chronic alcoholics chronic alcoholics cough reflex will be suppressed neuromuscular disorders neuromuscular disorders cough reflex will be absent or diminished hence there will not be a proper clearance of these dust particles they start accumulating and finally leads to infection that's why these individuals they are more prone to develop lung infections number two impairment in the mucociliary escalator impairment in mucociliary escalator if your respiratory tract and the cilia if they are working properly then you will not have any kind of an infection if there is impairment in the ciliary motility so what happens the dust particles which are entrapped in the mucus they will not be thrown upwards they start accumulating when large and large dust particles are accumulating along with the mucus it becomes a very good media for the secondary bacterial overload hence these patients are more prone to develop respiratory infections so what are the conditions which causes impairment in the mucociliary escalator uh, very important all of you know that there is Cartagenar syndrome Cartagenar syndrome this patient is also called as immotile cilia syndrome immotile cilia syndrome that means the name itself indicates these patients they have normal respiratory epithelium but the cilia the ciliary mobility will be lost so they cannot clear off the impacted or entrapped dust particles so they are more prone for secondary infection all conditions like chronic alcoholics chronic alcoholics any chronic any kind of chronic debilitating individuals any chronic debilitating individuals like cancer patients patients with 
immunodeficiency syndromes okay these patient they also have decreased ciliary motility hence there will not be a proper clearance of this mucus and entrapped particles this is whenever you have impairment in this and most important in our scenario is cigarette smoking why cigarette smoking so all of you know cigarette smoking when you heavy smoker causes constant irritation heavy smokers they have constant irritation because of inhalation of smoke which contains lot of chemicals and carcinogens these patients when they have chronic irritation the respiratory epithelium a respiratory epithelium which is nothing but pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium will gets turned into another type of epithelium which is protective in nature to prevent the constant irritation called as squamous epithelium this process of transforming a respiratory epithelium into a protective squamous epithelium we call it as metaplasia all of you have know this metaplasia in the general pathology when there is metaplasia this squamous epithelium the main function of squamous epithelium is for protection it will not have any cilia so what are the dust particles will enter it will not be cleared and these patients hence they are more prone to develop respiratory infections third one is alveolar macrophages all of us will have a resident alveolar macrophages in our body the main function is to clear what all the organism or dust particles which enters the alveoli what happens when there is defective functioning of alveolar macrophages whatever may be the conditions defective phagocytosis or any heavy heavy deposition of particles minute particles where alveolar macrophages cannot do their proper work or their work for alveolar macrophages will become very heavy those conditions they cannot clear up the organisms or dust particles and the more and more dust particles they start accumulating in the alveoli ultimately leading to infections okay finally there is summary of today's class final summary of today's class normally in all healthy individuals the respiratory system will have three important defense mechanisms one the upper respiratory tract which includes nose and nasopharynx nose and nasopharynx which prevents or filters majority of the large dust particles after large when the medium dust particles if they escape nose and nasopharynx they'll be trapped they will be trapped in the tracheobronchial tree because of mucos muco ciliary clearance and the presence of mucus majority of the particles filtered particles will get trapped in this and finally it will be taken out from the respiratory system the minute amount of small particles which are enter which enters directly into the alveoli finally they will be cleared by alveolar macrophages alveolar macrophages so these three important defense mechanisms you should know along with that in all all mucous membranes in the body wherever you see all mucous membranes in the body if you can collect mucous membranes most important one is respiratory tract and you have gastrointestinal tract all these along with these protective mechanisms they also have iga immunoglobulin coating on the surface this is also one of the most important defense mechanisms okay so we'll stop in today's class and when you have impairment in these mechanisms you will get pneumonia we call it as inflammation of the lung parenchyma that i will be talking to you in the 
रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम थर्ड क्लास